Here is Draymond Green talking about the future of the Golden State Warriors. They've shown nothing but respect, loyalty, um, love, trust to us. So I got no reason to go into it like, oh, man, they're not going to do right by Clay. They did right by me. Uh, they've done right by Steph. They've done right by all of us. You know, Clay got Clay tore his ACL. They paid him $160 million. So I have no reason to think that our ownership group aren't going to take care of us the way we've taken care of this organization. All right, here's Steph Curry on the future of Clay Thompson and Draymond Green. I can never see myself, you know, not with those two guys. It's, I understand this league changes and there's so many things that go into it and we're not going to play forever, but, you know, we've uh, experienced so much together and at the end of the day, like, again, I know they want to win, I know I want to win, and, that's all I worry. That's all I'm. Uh, that's all I'm worried about. Yeah, they're going to take a little time, obviously, and they're going to, and they might have already made up their mind of what they were going to do next year, win or lose last night. Do you want to keep Clay Thompson, and at what price? Chris Paul with his contract, you can be creative with that. Um, is Kaminga ready to be a star? You know, that's part of the problem too. I might hold on to Clay and Dre, but I think you know there's. Uh, a kicker that uh, is attached to Draymond Green. If he gets traded, he gets money out the door as well. Now, he's not costing you, you know, an exorbitant amount, but can you get Clay Thompson a two-year $50 million deal? Is that prudent for this team? And I'd probably hold on to Clay one more year if I don't feel like their younger players are ready. You know, Wiggins, I would try to trade, but I don't know what you're going to get. I mean, two years ago, he was great. But I don't know what you're going to get for him. And that would be, can you can you make one more run for Steph Curry? What's it going to cost you? And I think that's the question you have to ask. Because if you have Steph, and Steph's going to cost you $55 million, and you still have Draymond Green there, do you bring back Clay and say, let's try it one more time? I guess that would be probably the decision that they'll have to mull over here. But... Uh, Steph, can, he can't continue to be Steph. Like, at some point, there's going to be that somebody's got to be maybe the guy who takes over and lets Steph be a complimentary player. I mean, LeBron's been waiting for AD to do this, and it's not going to happen. So LeBron's like, oh, damn, I got to carry everybody up and down the floor here? Uh, yeah, probably so. And Steph may say the same thing. My God. Clay, make a shot. Like, somebody help me here. You know, they whiffed on Wiseman. Uh, Jordan Poole, that didn't do well at the very end. Should they have signed up Draymond Green? Well, you know, they're being loyal. I mean, we talk about ownership and lo lack of loyalty. There's been loyalty. But it's a business. And that's where I come in, and that's where a player should understand. And it is business. And is it better business for Golden State to move on from Chris Paul from Wiggins, Clay Thompson. Can you restock? Can you get younger? Can you get maybe somebody who can help Steph Curry get one more title? Because you spent a lot of money. Nobody spends more money than Golden State. But you didn't get your money's worth for a 10 seed that's now out of the playoffs. Yeah, Paul. You, you mentioned Wiseman. If you go back four years ago when they had that all-injury season where Steph had the, the wrist and Clay was out for the year and a half... They stumbled into the number two pick of the draft, and Wiseman didn't work out at all. They were one pick away from having Anthony Edwards. What would that have done to have him as that next unit to start and then take over? They they could have had Lamella Ball. They passed on. Mm. They passed on uh, Tyrese Halliburton, who who know at the, knew at the time. But imagine if they had taken him or Tyrese Maxey. Yeah. They went with the big guy. If they would have gotten any of those players in that draft, it would have the transition. Can you imagine? Yeah. And, you know, it used to be when all else fails, go big. Like, with your draft pick, like, you can't fail, go for a big man. And that's not the NBA anymore. When they went after Wiseman, who I thought was unproven, he showed glimpses at Memphis, but I'm like, okay, the number two overall pick? And you're like, yeah. And I go, okay. And Jay Billis, I remember Jay saying, hey, you know, I like him. I just didn't see it. Anthony Edwards, I saw somebody who was explosive. Uh, 
Halliburton, I, I watched in college, but I got to be honest, I didn't think like, wow, that guy's going to be a rookie of the year candidate. Then I saw him in Sacramento and I go, that guy's a star. You know, it's like Sabonis. I didn't get it when he was at Gonzaga. And then I got it and I'm like, wow, uh, it's not a fluke. He knows how to play. But that's tricky when you're drafting these players, when you draft them and what you expect from them and how they sort of ingratiate themselves into a lineup. Who can you get that will come in and all of a sudden understand their role with the Golden State Warriors? And that, that'll be tricky. But, you know, that's a dynasty. Golden State was a dynasty. Can they still hold on by their fingertips and be a dynasty?